Oh, looks like a great day. Well, today on Sport Fishing on the Fly, it's day one down here at Cuba with Avalon Fly Fishing Centers and we're expecting a really good day. They've had tough fishing for the past two weeks, you know, due to the weather. The weather's been a little suspect, but now weather's looking really good for us. We're expecting a high pressure front to move in. We're with the best fly fishing guide probably in the Caribbean, and that's Cookie. Me and Dale, we're gonna go out there, see what we can catch, hopefully bones and tarpon today. So that's day one, stay tuned. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels. The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Catch what you've been missing, Go Fish BC. Well that was the tarpon leaders too. Wow, those are them, right? Oh, wow. You have to keep a line for maybe 40 pounds, 50 pounds. Now, there's a lot to it. When you're tying up tarpon flies and putting them on, you got to have special leaders. Obviously, you got to have an expert. You know, ask your guide to set it up for you. That's what they're here for. Cookie's one of the best. And look at how you need a heavy pound test, but you got to have breaking strength, too. So we've got special tarpon leaders we'll show you a little bit later. And they've got 20 pound test in between some 80 pound tests. So you've got to have that double secure braking power. There it is, tarpon setup. Wow. So these are the best ones for the bonefish. So what we're doing is we're going after tarpon and bonefish. And that's what you're gonna see all week long here from Cuba. And these are some of the some of the killer patterns you're gonna use. Of course, you want the little the little crabs. You know the crabs, some of the shrimp patterns, different things for the bones, and then we'll show you the big tarpon flies a little bit later, but that's a good example of all the best. And you know, you don't need a whole bunch of patterns down here. There's a few patterns that are gonna work. These fish have not been fished over, and if you put it in front of them, you're gonna catch them. Yeah, especially these shrimp ones. These are his favorite right here for, yeah, for bonefish anyway. <laughs> put that one on there. Blem's allowed. Because then we got everything covered. We got clear intermediate sink, we got the sink tip, we got the full. Yeah. Did you get one of those full sinks done on a 12 or no? No, I've got it sitting in there. That's the only other one we need, and then we're. Did you want it on one? Did the, the I relied on him. First day, first day, yeah, yeah, first day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you get set up, make sure you got everything when you come down. All right, off we go. So what are we gonna, what are we doing today then? We're gonna go out and... Well, today we go on the south. Uh, we go fishing tarpa in the morning, and maybe on 10 o'clock we go for gender fishing and the bonefish club. Okay. Uh, today we, the weather is perfect. Good, the good. A little wind in the morning, the afternoon is going down the wind. It's nice. Calm. Maybe in the afternoon you see the tarpa rolling, you know. Oh, beautiful. It's good, it's good play today with fishing. So the ideal conditions, as Cookie was saying, is you get a little bit of wind in the morning, but in the afternoon it calms out. And that's when we want to hit the flat. So we'll target the tarpon in the morning, maybe head in the mangroves, do some casting. Like these are all mangroves in here. And then we'll head to the flats and do a little bonefish. So when we come back, we're going to catch some nice fish. Yeah. <laughs> The wind is a blowing. Oh, and you can't see. Either. That's the best thing. You gotta wait for it to calm down. You know, we got high winds right now. And that's just what you have to deal with sometimes. And the bulldog, put him up first. As always, let him go at it. Show me how to do it. So the second person in the boat is never idle. What you're doing is helping the guy out on the front. So Dale's up on the front right now. And I'm watching his line, so I'm going to hold his line for him as he strips it in. And if he gets a big fish, 
you want to make sure you clear the line for them at all times. So you just keep pulling it in and then just allow it fall through your line, or go through your hands when he casts. And that way there's no tangles. So always work in two-man operation. It's clear water. Oh, so that's what you're fishing, but it's yeah. usually calm, right? Yeah. And there'll be the big hundred pounders in this. When you see them come, it'll be really remarkable yeah, when you right. see them. And they come in schools, eh? Cookie, our guide, he's up top. He's seen a school of tarpon coming up. And we're going to move them on in. Is that in. them right Looks here? Looks like it's right in front of us here about 12 o'clock. And we're after the baby tarpon. And what we mean by baby tarpon is, you know, that 10 to 20, 30 pound range. Oh, yeah, potentially. 40 tarpon might be able to 40. Cookie says there's about 40 tarpon there. So we're going to go right into them. Okay. That so now Dale's right going to cast. Yeah. I see them right there. Yeah. And always listen to your guide. Coming? You tell me. And always one person, obviously, you can see Dale's up, one guy at a time, and that's just the way it is. The okay, other guy helps over the line. line. Out, huh? I wasn't doing my job. The other way, yeah. <laughs> Put it, stack it right by Back your feet. Yep. Got to watch the line. You're always clearing the line for the guy casting. So keep it down by your feet and make sure it doesn't tangle. When he's casting, let it float through your, your hands and make sure he's not stepping on his line. If he is, let him know. Because once you hook one of those tarpon, if you're standing on your line, bye-bye. It's gone. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Let me go. Whichever you win. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Get ready to bow. He's going to do it when he goes. 60 pounds, 60 pounds. Nice. 60, 70 pound tournament. How's about that? And I saw him come right up. That was awesome. Got the good cast in right in front of the fish. Stripped him back. I'm ready because he's going to go up again. Yeah, put some heat on him. Sideways, done. Sideways? More drag. Yeah, more drag. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't finished. He hasn't even no, started no. to jump yet. You know. oh. oh, there he is. There, that's a nice tarp. I left the barb in that. That's too, a so. big one. Oh yeah. Oh, there he is out there. If you can see him, right in front of us. Oh, look at that. Yeah. All right now. Right in the top. That's yeah, funny, he wasn't a jumper. Uh, oh, he jumped once. Yeah, that was it. Tail. Hmm. Lead him on this side, Don. Huh? Lead him over here. Yeah. yeah. That'll pull him back. Yeah, I can't believe he hasn't. Wow. That's a nice tarp. Hard to believe that's on the end of my line. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's got it. Man. Oh, you know what? A week of this, and you're going to have worms on you like the Hulk. No, that's why I say you think he's done, and they're still. Lead him over there again. Now. I can't, yeah. The less the side. Big thing too is keep your rod sideways. Really work the fish back and forth. Never really hold it up like you would a trail rod. Keep it to the side. Keep working them back. Yeah, that's a 12 weight you got. Oh, that's there. a 12 weight. <laughs> well, you need 12 weights for these big guys. You know, we're looking at 50, probably 50, 60 pounds for this guy. 50 pounds. Oh. oh. Which way, Cookie? That's way. Try him on there. Oh! Very good. Oh, man. Oh! Wow! Oh! That's awesome. Right now? Yeah. Now left? Left. They have so much power. It's incredible. Okay, rod down. 
Okay, get up there, Don. Okay. Okay. You can hold it. Oh yeah. How's that? How big is the cookie? It's a 65. 65? Want me to help you or? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Oh. You got it. Oh. How's that? Woohoo! Very, very nice. Oh, oh, gee. Oh. Oh. Should I unlock them now? Yeah. Okay. Tell me when the fly's clear, Don. Yeah, it's, it's clear. Wow. Okay. You got it attaining you. That's a beautiful. Yeah. Oh. How's about that? Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That is nice. Wow, beautiful. It's a wonderful fish. Yeah, well, let's let her go. That was awesome. What a fight. What a great fight. Beautiful. Thanks, Cookie. All right, well, put her back in. Oh, clear off the deck of all the crap. Wow. Oh, that's a nice fish. So they don't take too long to revive, do they? Or? Wow. Look at that. Pretty rough in there, Don, that mouth? Wow. No, it's nice. Nice and soft. Wow, look at that. And when do you know where to let her go? When she starts kicking her? Yeah. All right. Cookie's going to let him go. So you ready? There he goes. <laughs> How's about that, buddy? Great job. Nice. nice what a 65 pounds? 65 pounds, yeah. And we're going after babies. Now that that's a little bit bigger than a baby. Yeah. That's mid-size. Mid-size. So that's a great way to start when we come back. Some more tarpon here with the boys at Avalon Fly Fishing Centers. It's fantastic down here in Cuba. Yeah. Great job. Whew. You're stoked. <laughs> Oh, is that a fish? Oh, yeah. He's biting at it. Oh, oh fish on! Fish on! Here we go. That's a nice one. Oh, nice one. Let him. Let him. Oh. Let him go. Oh. It's a nice snook. Yeah. Oh, he's rolling. Oh. 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 They're tough, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Tailing. Yeah. The nice thing about being out with uh, tarpon fishing, you get the odd snook. And what we've done is uh, Cookie's got us right in the mangroves and we're casting. And usually, ideally, for the snook, you know, eight to ten weight rods, we're using our tarpon toes. But there's a nice snook, eh? Yeah. How big? Little guy. He's a three pound. Three pound? <laughs> hey, <laughs> snook's a snook. I'll take it. Right in the mangroves, eh? Yep. The beautiful thing is you can get these snook up to how big, Cookie? It's a three pound. Yeah, no, how big how can big we can. get them? Uh, here is a 15 pounds. 15 pound pounds. snook, so you can get some big snook in here. So again, heavy rods, 10 weight rods, probably preferable, but we'll let that guy go. Look at the mouth. Yeah, look at the oh, mouth on them. Wow. They're just huge. Big mouse. So when you gotta remember when you're out tarpon fishing, you have a lot of different opportunities. I mean we're not we're not worried about the bullfish today, there's flats everywhere. What we want is tarpon, number one, and you get the old incidental snook when you come in the mangroves. <laughs> okay. Good nice job. job, good job, Cookie. Now you can go up and cast for it. Yeah, it's just yeah. like it's not, it's kind of like Bow River fishing. You're it trying is. to stop your fly just before it flies in the mangroves. This is our kind of fishing. Yeah, you got to try to just stop it before it flies right into the mangroves. I only hooked one tree, just yeah. the one over there. But you yeah. got to get it right in by the mangroves, and that's very cool. They hit pretty aggressively. It makes it makes it tough for the casting, but You're the accuracy is good. You're okay, up. I'm up. Okay, we'll take it. Okay. Today on the bench, I'm going to tie you up the Black Death Tarpon Bunny. Now, if you want a really good effective pattern to use on the flats, and especially fishing in the mangroves or just off the edge of the mangroves, this is the fly for you. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a Mustad C70SD 2-aught. 
some 3 out black thread to tie with along with some hot pink mono to finish off the head, some hologram stick on gold eyes for the eyes, some black rabbit strip for the tail, some black tipped red rabbit strips for the body, and hard as nails lacquer to finish off the head. I started the fly off by tying in my thread and I've also taken some 20 pound test and tied in a 20 pound test tail guard on the back. Again it's optional, some people don't like it but I prefer it. It stops my rabbit from getting hooked up. So to start the fly off I'm going to take some black rabbit and extend a small tail out the back and again make it about as long as a hook. So the hook is you know an inch and a half long and I'm going to tie in some black rabbit right at the tail and to form the tail. Now that the black tail is tied in and my thread is net the rear of the hook, I'm going to take my red rabbit and tie it in right at the rear of the hook. And make sure you tie it in good because we're going to be wrapping this forward a few wraps to form the body. Now only bring your thread up about halfway up the hook. That's where we're actually going to tie off, about halfway up the hook. Then take your rabbit and as you wrap it forward, keep pulling the rabbit back. You want to form a really pulled back tapered body on this fly and it usually takes about three or four rabbit pulls around the hook to form the, the body of the fly and then tie off about halfway up the hook. Now if you've done things correctly you should be about halfway up the hook with the black thread still on. What we're going to do is whip finish off that black thread and then we're going to actually take our hot pink mono which is a lot thicker thicker thread and tie it in and once we tie it in we'll form a real nice head on this fly and we'll make the, the head of the fly quite large. Now that I've tied in the head with the hot pink mono and built it up quite quite a bit so you've got quite a big pink head on that fly I'm going to take two of my hologram prism prismatic eyes and we're going to stick them on either side so stick one on one side Take another and stick it on the other side. And once you have your eyes on and in place, we're going to take our hard as nails finish and pour this over the fly. Essentially put this right over that, that uh, material we tied in, the mono, and cover up the eyes. And this is going to seal those eyes right onto the fly. To finish the fly off, continually lacquering that head for probably two or three more times. I like to put a good, good coat of lacquer on there. It's nice to rotate the fly as you put the lacquer on to keep it from, you know, balling up. But do probably do about two or three sets, allow the fly to set overnight, and then put another set of lacquer on. And then also trim the tail to length till it's about hook and a half length out the back. So there it is, the finished black death tarpon bunny. Now there's many different patterns you can tie in this tarpon bunny style. Uh, the two most effective that we found is the black and the red and the black and the chartreuse. Two very effective patterns in Cuba. When you plan to come down and tropical fish for tarpon, there's some important equipment you need before you arrive. My favorite rod is a 12 weight rod. You need something heavy because you will potentially be getting over 100 pound tarpon, especially down here in Cuba with Avalon Fly Fishing Centers. So again, make sure you're equipped, large arbor reel. And I really like this new Hardy Zane fly rod. It's a 12 weight rod and it's got the fighting butt. I like this extra butt on the bottom and it's got an extra grip where you can really muscle the fish. And again, different types of lines. So here are the different lines you're gonna need. One is just your dry line, okay, and again, make sure this tarpon tapered line, and again, it comes in a clear intermediate sink, a dry, and a heavy sink tip. The majority that you're gonna use, though, is the clear intermediate sink, which is this line here, and it has to be made for tropical. So make sure, because when you're down in this warm water, if you don't have a good tropical fly line, it's gonna coil up on you and you're gonna have memory and you're not gonna like it. So make sure you get a good tropical line before you show up. The second rod you're gonna require is a 10 weight. Now the 10 weight rod is for the baby tarpon, uh, potentially the permit, some barracuda. So it's everything else except the big tarpon. And again, I've got a real nice Hardy Zane 10 weight rod, nine foot. It's made for fighting those fish. It doesn't have the extra handle to grab things, but a 10 weight rod can put enough muscle in there 
and I can't stress enough how important it is to have a large arbor reel. Again, the same fly lines. Get a 10 weight dry, preferably with a little bit of a sink tip on it, and a 10 weight intermediate clear sink. So remember, before you come down to the tropics, two main rods you need for tarpon, 10 weight for the baby tarpon, and a 12 weight for the big boys. Cookie, how big? Couple of pounds, three pounds. Three pounds. Yeah. Oh. There you are there. Oh yeah. Get out there. Isn't that nice? Oh. Oh. Got him. <laughs> Gee, they're almost uh, twins, aren't they? Yeah. There's no bone. Yeah, those are nice, pretty bones. Wow. Yeah. Nice, nice little bone fish. That's a beauty. Well, and they take it every time. Where of a suck. There he is again. A few pounds. And I don't think they need much reviving, do they? They're, no, they're pretty spunky. They're ready to go. There he goes. Hey, we got into the pod. Cookie saw him from way out. You know, you can see him from way back, especially on the Morro Flats. A oh, good job. So we're hoping the wind dies a bit. We've got some pretty high winds, you know, fishing from the east, but it's been pretty good. When we come back next week, what do you think? Maybe a permit? A few yeah. more tarpon? <laughs> That's right. Hey, Hopefully. You never know. When you're on the log, take care. Conserve the waters. Done a great job down here in Cuba. We'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Want more information? Visit us at sfotf.ca. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, Head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.